The discoveries never end. Hello and welcome to Kitco Mining's Investment Trends with me, Paul Harris, in which today we are talking about exploration in Colombia. Joining me is Ari Sussman, Executive Chair of Collective Mining. Ari, welcome back to Kitco. Great to see you as always, Paul. Uh, you have a market capitalization of 1.6 billion US dollars. Your share price is up about 275% year on year. Congratulations to that. And why? Because you keep making discoveries. Most recently, you announced the discovery um, of a silver, uh, potentially a silver deposit at Target X at your Guayabales project in Caldas in Colombia. You also have uh, recently talked about the porphyry discovery you've made at San Antonio. And also there's tungsten in there as well. And if that's not enough, the Apollo target, the Apollo deposit continues to grow and grow. Now, let's start with silver. Colombia has one primary silver exploration project. So silver discovery there is something that is quite rare. You just announced the discovery with a, a drill intercept of 12.85 meters, grading 503 grams per tonne of silver equivalent. What is it looking like at Target X? Well, first off, let's start by saying that this is a greenfield discovery. Never been any exploration at Target X, and, and we're really happy with what we found. Your point on silver is so valid. There's really only one silver project in Colombia. But if you read the literature of the history of the Marmado area, it's all about silver. So the Spaniards mined silver somewhere in this area, but the records of exactly where aren't super clear. Um, we generated this target, and as your point, we, we announced this discovery hole that had 12 and a half meters over 500 grams silver equivalent. And But what's exciting to me about it is, it, besides it's a greenfield discovery, is the discovery hole hit a lot of different veins, right? So when you're looking at a vein system that you hope might bulk out, there need to be multiple uh, veins in it. For starters and equally important we see veins at different orientations along the drill hole so that means there's more than one vein system that's come in at different angles and so it has the earmarks of something that might evolve uh, into a potential deposit in the future and we're moving a rig back there as we speak we should be drilling it uh, come early october Okay, so a lot more to come from there. You're just really starting to get into that. Now, with the Santoni at the Porphyry, a recent drill result there, 174 meters grading, 1.4 grams per tonne gold, 0.16% copper, and some molybdenum in there to boot. What is, uh, or how is San Antonio shaping up? So I love this idea of San Antonio, and let me just frame it uh, for, for, the, for the viewers quickly. So we have a proposed location where we plan on building a mill for, for the Apollo system. The mill, it will have an underground tunnel that will connect to Apollo, and that will be about three kilometers away, okay, to the southwest. Well, in the same distance to the northeast is the San Antonio project. So if there's a mill going to be built in the future for Apollo, exploring for porphyries at San Antonio makes a lot of sense. In general terms, porphyry exploration worries me because the capex on them is so large. But if you're going to have a mine next door, this becomes a, a home run. And don't forget, this is sitting right on the Pan American Highway with, with hydro power traversing the project. So excellent location. Now, we, as your point, we made a discovery. Okay, we've discovered, we've hit it in, in three holes. Um, all three holes bottomed in strong mineralization. We had a, too small of a rig. We've swapped that out and actually added two more. So now we have three rigs drilling on San Antonio. I'm, I, I'm very bullish. I walked the project um, three weeks ago, right from the base of the mountain up. My, our young team uh, pushed me hard. Uh, it was well worth it. And um, the alteration zone is immense. I mean, it, we announced three by three kilometers, but the only limiting factor of that three by three kilometer zone is that we haven't gone further. Okay, it's going to get bigger. Um, the the alteration zone, which is the peritic halo of porphyries running low grade gold, you know, up to point from 0.2 to 0.5 grams per ton gold. And now we, in the drilling, we've discovered both late stage high grade uh, porphyry related veins and a copper gold porphyry system. Last point I'll make on one of the reasons that I'm that I really like is I like it is because the gold to copper ratio in the intercepts we've had in the porphyry to date is very high in favor of gold. It's like three to four, three or four to one, somewhere between there. So if that ratio holds, which tends to happen in porphyries, and we find the, the potassic core, which we haven't found yet, by the way, of, of the porphyry system. So our copper grade gets up to, you know, 0 0.4, 0.5%, which is okay for copper. The company gold grade, in theory, should be one and a half to two grams per ton. So combined, this would be very high grade. All of that sitting beside the highway in a future mill that will service Apollo. It's pretty exciting. 
Excellent. Um, you mentioned Apollo and the, the mill site you're looking at there. Apollo has been responsible for your, your share price growth, your market capitalization. How is that sweeping up? What are you starting to think of in terms of the potential of what a mining scenario could look like? Okay, so we have a plan. We've just put together our business plan, and the business plan is what do we need to do to, to submit an environmental permit application with ANLA, which is the agency uh, in Colombia responsible for mine permitting on the environmental side, and we've, we, we've determined a path forward to that, and we believe we can be submitting a permit in the first half of 2027. So what do we need to do to get there? So the first thing is, everyone knows we don't have a mineral resource estimate yet on what is, which is clearly a multi-million ounce gold equivalent system. In about one year-ish from today, we will have our first mineral resource estimate. Okay, the, the plan for that estimate is to try and get the top thousand meters from surface where the system outcrops into the measured and indicated category. And then anything deeper than that, which is the, which is the ramp zone, the high grade ramp zone, would, that would be an inferred because it's harder to drill because it's further drilling from surface. Um, and with that, we'll be able, that will form the basis of us converting that resource to reserves and we'll launch into a pre-feasibility study. So we're going to skip the preliminary economic assessment phase. We've done most of that work internally already and go straight to a PFS. And that's how we will be applying for a permit uh, in early 2027. That puts this project, you know, if you think about projects globally right now owned by juniors, that in theory means that we should be producing in 2030 sometime if we move forward in a straight line. Uh, everyone should know that Colombia is one of the quicker permitting jurisdictions in the world. It takes about 11 months according to the schedule, which is outlined in the mining law as part of the government. So permits early 2028, construction hopefully immediately thereafter in two years of construction, give or take, production. Now, we're in a market that's getting more and more conducive for growth in the gold space. The gold price is touching, what, 3,700 US dollars per ounce as we speak today. The silver price is up, uh, what, almost 43 US dollars per ounce. You raised over $63 million Canadian in April, including the early exercise of warrants by Agnico Eagle Mines. How much runway does that give you and what opportunity does that give you to accelerate your plans towards a resource uh, pre-feasibility study, permitting, etc.? So as of June 30th, which is our last reported financial statement, we had almost 71 million US dollars in the treasury. Okay, so we are fully funded for this year. We haven't budgeted next year, but we're approximately fully funded. But that would obviously take our treasury down to next to nothing. So that means we're going to need to raise money probably in the first half of next year would be the timing for that. And I think if the markets remain buoyant like they are today, it's very nice to finally be in, a, in an up market versus a down market. Um, I think whatever financing we do will be the last one the company would need until we make a decision to build. Now, we, we've spoken before about, um, you know, leaving money on the table and not so. Um, how, how has your thinking there evolved? Take all the money you can so you have that runway, so you can execute everything you want to do, or, you know, manage uh, the dilution? We've been greedy in that way where we're managing dilution because we're the largest shareholders of the company. I'm one of them. Um, to make sure we, we, we build as much value as possible. So we haven't taken as much money as we could have raised in any rounds and we'll continue to be fiscally responsible that way so we don't blow out the company. We're in a fortunate situation. I mean, we have only 85 million shares outstanding approximately, right? And that's after five years of, of heavy drilling. I mean, we've got 70,000 meters of drilling this year with 10 rigs on the property. So we'll be, we'll be responsible. You know, I, I was, I'm always been of the view if you can get a company to the construction decision with 100 million shares outstanding or less, you've done your job. Because the problem is when you have too many shares outstanding for a grassroots early stage company, this share count will blow quickly. So I think we've done our job in this regard and we'll make sure that we hit that 100 million share mark or less, I think significantly less, once we get to production or get to construction. My apologies. Okay. Uh, another interesting twist um, in your exploration is the discovery of tungsten. And you've put a couple of news releases out, including sort of tungsten. Um, how is the tungsten aspect sh taking shape? Is there potentially enough there to, to be interesting, to be included in a future development? A hundred percent. It's going to get mined. It's sitting literally from just below about 30 meters from surface, which is the weathering zone. So you have an oxide zone from about surface 30 meters. From 30 meters down to about 120 meters, we have areas with very rich tungsten. That will get mined. It's not complicated to separate. Our tungsten mineral is known as shelite. It's very coarse. You could, in, in theory, if you wanted to, not that we're going to do this, you can put a jig in, 
separate the tungsten and stockpile everything else. That's how simple it is. So we will get the tungsten out um, in the form of tungsten trioxide, and uh, that will come out right near the beginning of a future mine. So it's amazing, and it's the first evidence of tungsten in hard rock ever in Colombia. Um, government's now openly talking about it. You may have heard that recently. And um, I think with tungsten, tungsten, people need to understand. I mean, everyone's in love with critical minerals, but tungsten, like many of them, is a small global market, right? It's, it's about $7 billion, right? So I'm not the firmest believer that primary tungsten mines are going to go into production unless it's on its way imminently. Okay, El Monte has one, obviously, that's going to go. But having a byproduct tungsten, uh, tungsten stream, makes all the sense in the world. It's close to the United States, you know, in Colombia, and, and it will be relatively quick to production given our, our, our aggressive timeline. Given that tungsten is such a, an important critical mineral for the armaments industry, amongst others, a number of Western governments are giving sort of grants and things like that to help companies do uh, technical studies to looking at to the possibility of recovering it. Is that something that potentially you could uh, benefit from? Or is the fact that you're in Colombia rather than Canada or the United States, would that preclude that? So in order to gain investment from, from, uh, from a government like the United States, which would be our focus, uh, you need to have a mineral resource estimate. So you foreshadowed my very first call from about one year today. As soon as we, when that mineral resource estimate comes out, my next thing to do will be call the U.S. government, the Department of Defense, to try and have a conversation on the tungsten here and what, how they might contribute to that coming out of the ground financially. Okay, well, taking a step back, Ari, um, with Guayabal is such a potential source of mineralization, it does seem very hard to believe that other companies have previously explored there and drawn a blank. Um, how did they miss all of this? It's, well, there was, there's almost no historical drilling, so, and most of it was focused around a very small mine uh, on our license, which uh, they called the Guayabalis mine, hence the name of the project. Um, that area is not interesting for us, okay? So look, this was a, not an easy system to interpret, right? I mean, we, we weren't right with our interpretation early, but now we've got the model correct. And, and what it is, it's a, it's a reduced intrusion related system. So that's effectively a porphyry that's been starved of oxygen and the intrusion spewed off all these late stage high grade veins. And so now we have a model for it. Now it's become abundantly clear how to explore. But believe me, we made our mistakes, but look, I'm in the business of taking big risk. We drilled some pretty wild, aggressive holes and, and it's not like we found Apollo on hole one. You know, I think we found it on about all of, uh, close to hole 30, right? So- Well, that wasn't even the initial target. No, no, it was not. So this is, but you know, the ge if, you, if you have excellent geology and you know what you're looking for, to define what excellent geology is, which we knew this project was, we figured we had a good chance of it happening, and it did. And, and let's not forget, you know, the saying in mining, we want the first to say this, the best place to find a mine is next to a mine. We're contiguous to our motto, which is, you know, 8.7 million ounces of total resources and an historical monster of millions of ounces produced. Okay. Looking ahead to the, the pre-feasibility study, a uh, key factor there, you recently appointed Ned Jalil as CEO. Um, he's a, he was He's held senior technical and developmental roles with uh, companies such as Kimros Gold, Appian Capital. Uh, it seems like you're following a similar playbook that you deployed at Continental Gold when you hired Don Gray, fresh from building the Escobar mine, silver mine in, in, uh, in Guatemala, Veridica. W what is your plan there for Apollo? So I think we, well, it, it, look, we're on an open path to build it. And obviously we're open to sell it if someone gives us the right price. Um, Ned is a really strong guy okay he's got wonderful management skills which is key for me to find someone like with that skill set and he and he's passionate and he's creative so we're fortunate to have him the the, the thing that i've done this time versus at continental gold is i brought that role in earlier right because the, one of the mistakes that we made is i didn't think about enough how like resource estimation you need to do multiple iterations of it to get it right before you um, go to reserves we do that internally now we have that skill set mine planning needs to be like that too it needs to be an internal generated skill set so ned is beavering away at scenarios for mining as we speak and and by the time we make a decision to build we'll probably have done 50 of them right and so we'll have worked out the kinks and we're fortunate to have him and he's excellent with people and we're lucky it hasn't all been plain sailing, though, in the last couple of months. Um, in August, a financial institution issued a short report against collective mining. What has been the impact of that? Well, the impact was virtually nothing because it was baseless. Um, the accusation was, which is, by the way, the accusation is correct. Um, when you have 
older titles in Colombia, older being pre-computers. And then when the cadaster electronically was introduced, so you're titled post-computers and you put them together, the edges sometimes don't exactly match and you have what's called incomplete cells. Incomplete cells are, are, are little small half a squares or, or, or less than a square that cannot be staked by anybody. And the only ultimate owner of those incomplete cells are the title holders on either side of them. We are the title holders on 100% of the side because they're both our titles at a butt. So it, it's a frivolous thing. It's an error within the uh, electronic cadaster. The Colombian government is working to fix it. I suspect it will be fixed, it, but we had this at Continental Gold. No one brought it up and it never seemed to matter. And Zijin successfully mined through the incomplete cells as we speak. Okay. Now, Ari, a lot going on. So what are some of the key catalysts for our viewers to watch out for over the next six to 12 months? Drill, 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 and more more drill. I mean, we, you know, we're drilling the San Antonio target. We'll soon be drilling the next target. Apollo's uh, getting blitzed. And we have a couple of holes from various grassroots targets around the Guayabalas project that we're waiting on assays. The only thing I'll caution industry-wise, there's definitely, because of the activity, there's been a bit of a slowdown. Um, assay turnarounds uh, gone from about two weeks to four or five weeks. So that's a little bit slower. But other than that, um, more news and lots of it. Excellent. Well, congratulations on your exploration success this year. Uh, Ari Sussman, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, Paul. Always good to be here. And stay tuned for more investment trends. I'm Paul Harris, and this is Kiko Mining. <laughs>